verse chapter 3, and we're reading verses 5 and 6. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all of thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At this point in time, I want you to give your undivided attention to our very brief messenger this morning, Mrs. Herbalyn Forbes Williams. Thank you, Mr. Colleagues, yeah. students, indeed, it is a joy to know that God is in control of our lives. Because had it not been for him, had it not been his control over us, even our passing through COVID-19 would have been more disastrous. Even our being on the road on a daily basis, would have been chaos. But this morning we are happy to know that we serve not just a mighty God, but an almighty God, King of kings and indeed Lord of lords. And we're not the only ones who recognize this. Back in the Bible days, there were many who did same. In fact, there were three boys. There were no older than 14 years, they were taken from their home, from their family members, from mother's care, from their father, from friends whom they knew, from a country, from a country in which they were comfortable, and they were taken to another place. They were taken to a place far away from home. The place they went to was called Babylon. And Babylon comes from a word that means confusion. Babel, the main root word, confusion. And the first thing that happened was that their name was changed. And someone changing your name, forcing a name change on you, wants you to change your character, wants you to change who you are. So when your friends call you names, when your friends give you nicknames, they want you to act likewise. They want you to do things that, that are out of your character. But these three boys, they knew whom they served. They knew that their God was in control of their lives. And so even though taken from home and family, from comfort zone, from a place where they were familiar with, from people whom they knew personally and up close, taken to a far country, they never changed their love for Almighty God. The king of Babylon, his name was Nebuchadnezzar. And he set up a golden image. And he wanted these boys to bow to the image. But if these boys remembered anything, it was the command that God gave them that they should serve nothing else, no one else, no image, they should serve no one but Almighty God. So when they were forced to bow, these boys said, King, it doesn't even matter what you say to us. Even if you want to threaten our lives, we are not going to bow to a golden image. We are not going to go against our Almighty God. We know that our God is in control. Oftentimes, children, when you move away from home, Oftentimes when you're away from your mother and father, when you're away from the people whom you know, you tend to behave in a way that they never taught you because they want to fit into a crowd. But can I tell you, may I tell you that these three boys were among millions of people in Babylon. And on that particular day, there were many thousands who were bowing to that image. And they stood firm. These three boys stood firm. These three Hebrew children 
did not bow to that golden image because they remembered, they recognized, they knew, they believed, they trusted in their God who was in control. So boys, especially boys, when you're among those friends of yours who behave badly and unruly, these boys who are disrespectful to teachers, who disregard drivers, who don't pay any regard to the security officers at the gate, or even the persons who work on the ground. Those boys especially who do that, when you're among their company and you know that your parents taught you to respect and love God, stand up for what you believe. And those girls, don't think that it's only the boys. Girls, when you're with your friends, who want to do things that you have never seen done before, things that you might even find funny or thrilling, but you know they're wrong. Don't forget how you have been taught to do the things that are right and don't follow the crowd. The three Hebrew boys did not follow the crowd because they knew that their God was in control. So even when they were threatened to be thrown in the fiery furnace, even when their lives were at stake, they stood for God and God stood for them. He says, if you stand for me, I will stand for you. If you regard me before men, I will regard you before my heavenly father. If you are respectful to me among others, I, God, will stand for you. And that's what he did. Those students who are walking, you do know we are in general devotion. You stop where you are. And even that is disrespectful and disregarding what you have been taught. Those boys were going to be thrown in a fiery furnace. We can't even imagine how hot it was. The Bible tells us that it was heated seven times more than before. And the men who threw them in the fire were consumed because it was so hot. But God came down and stood in the fire before they got there. And he cooled it for them so that when they were there, they were not consumed. Students, I'm telling you, stand up for Almighty God and he will stand for you. Teachers, I remind you that regardless of what the children are doing, we serve an everlasting father and we are not to go down the road with them. We are not to go toe to toe with these disrespectful students. At times they are, but you stand up for what you know is right and you show them the path. Because if you fail to do it, if we fail to show them the right, we will have to answer to God as Nebuchadnezzar did. So this morning I remind you that God is in control and it doesn't matter how young you are, infant department. It doesn't matter how old you are, grade six students. Stand up for God and he will stand for you. If it is your desire this morning, if it is your desire because we don't know what the next moment holds. We don't know who is going to live to see the next moment. If in your heart you believe that God is in control of your life and you want to live for him and you want to stand for him like the three boys did, just raise your hand. It doesn't matter who you are. Staff, student, parent. It doesn't matter who you are. Raise your hand and stand for Jesus and let the devil know that he's a liar and we serve a living God. God sees your hand and the angels who are with us daily have taken record. Let us pray. A mighty fortress is our God. A bulwark never failing. Or help he amid the flood of mortal ills prevailing. Oh, gracious, heavenly, loving Father. It is such a joy this morning to know that you are in control of our lives. We are so happy to know that you love us so much. That you came and you died for us and you lived on earth to show us how to live. And right now, intercession is being made for us in heaven. We just ask in your love and your mercy through the power of your Holy Spirit 
that you will endow us with same spirit, that we will stand for you, that we will remember that you are in control of our lives and that nothing can happen to us unless you sanction it. Nothing can happen to us unless you give the go ahead. And when you do that, you do it for your glory and for the salvation of our souls. We ask this morning that again your Holy Spirit will mark every hand that has been raised, every thought that is in accordance to your will. And perhaps there is one that isn't. We ask for your mercy because we know that you are indeed a merciful, loving Father. Forgive us where we fail and strengthen us. And we just ask again your blessings on John Rowling's Success Primary School. Every member, admin, academic, ancillary, student, every stakeholder, even those who just pass by. We ask, oh loving God, that your spirit will resonate in our lives and that we will testify of your goodness because indeed you are a good, hallelujah, indeed you are a good God to us. Praise God. Praise God. In your name. Amen. 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 You're now just a part of my life, but my everything. Your love reaches way down deep within. Has a human understanding. There will always be a song for you, I sing. One word alone just can't express my heart to say. Gratitude for the love of day, peace and song. Your warm embrace and tenderness. Patient with me through all my men. I am sick to see my love. You are the best. Bye. 